there are two mistakes that I have made over the years when it comes to where to live overseas. I see a lot of people making these mistakes and it's going to cost you a lot of time. It's going to cost you a lot of money. It's going to create a lot of frustration in your life. Let me share with you two things that I would remove from my mind when thinking to move overseas. One of the things that we get here at Nomad Capitalist is a front row seat to people who would like to live overseas, would like to diversify their assets, would like to protect their assets and be more free because they realize their countries are going in the wrong direction, but they're not really sure how things work in other parts of the world. We often see, let's say an American who comes in and they think that opening a bank account in Switzerland is the same as opening a bank account in, you know, at Chase Bank in the United States. You go in with your $100, you give them some flyer you get in the mail, and the account's open in 45 minutes. Things are different. In other ways, people come in and they think every country operates exactly the same way their country does. And the reality is there's a reason that you want to either permanently or temporarily or part-time leave your country because there's some things about it that aren't working the way that you want. Right? And so when you move overseas, you have to understand that things are going to be a little different. And so these two things that I've been uh, thinking about are things that are only going to make it harder for you to make that transition. And I'll tell you what they are. Number one, it's chasing romance. And number two, it's chasing sex appeal. Now, before you think, you know what I'm talking about, I'm not talking about chasing uh, the love of your life to some other country. That's a separate topic. When I say number one, chasing romance, is I hear people, they'll come and they'll say, uh, you know, I've convinced my wife to move overseas, but she'll only move to Spain. You're like, why Spain? Oh, because, uh, you know, she read up in this book, and we watched a movie, and she imagines, you know, sipping sangria on a cobblestone street somewhere. Uh, and when you actually go to Spain, I was last in Spain about a year ago for New Year's Eve. Uh, went to a place a couple days before New Year's Eve. Hey, sorry, we're out of alcohol. We don't have any more wine. Not just, hey, we don't have that particular wine that you want, which if you're coming from the United States in particular, some countries, that's going to be what it's like. You, you, every time you order something from the menu, oh, we're out of that today, sorry. Uh, but it wasn't that. Uh, it wasn't, uh, oh, we're just not open for the holidays. It's, we literally didn't pay our bill. We don't have any wine to serve. And I shared that story a number of years ago when I spent about a month in Spain. They're like, yeah, we just, we just don't have any wine. Uh, and so the romance moving from, you know, I've heard people who they live in Orange County, California, and they shop at uh, the nice malls, and they go to the Cheesecake Factory, and they valet the car, and that lifestyle, I mean, you could have that in many places, no doubt, but if the goal is, I'm going to go and live in some, you know, some, in Barcelona, or some cute city in Spain, uh, the places where you'd probably choose to live, you're not going to have that, and I don't know too many people who are going to the Cheesecake Factory in Irvine, California, and being told, hey, sorry, we're out of wine, just out of wine, no wine, and yet you could have that in a place like Spain. I'm sure there's many people who are watching and they live in Spain. Oh, I drink wine all the time. Uh, I'm just sharing my personal experience. Um, people talk about, oh, the romantic strolling streets, La Rambla, and all, all over Europe. And I remember I was in Portugal uh, a couple months ago, and I'm walking on the street. I, like, tripped on a couple different occasions because the tiles are all different. Like, they're all in different directions, and one fell out, and one, like, it just, just wasn't, wasn't done properly. And people always say in countries they like, countries that they have this romantic appeal to, oh, that is romantic. It's part of the charm. It's part of the culture that you're just walking down this, you know, this you know, paved path where you're tripping. Somehow Dubai, somehow Singapore, somehow all the places that have these perfectly paved roads, perfectly paved sidewalks, everything's like, a, you know, it's clean. That's not romantic. But the idea of, you know, some stone... I was talking to a friend of mine in the uh, hotel industry, and he's saying there's certain hotel chains where it's like, I don't know if they're still in business, but they, they appeal to a European audience where they have one plug. You ever check in this hotel? There's one plug, and it's behind the bed. You have to move the bed to plug in your phone. You've got to unplug a lamp. But he says there's certain people, like from Europe, for example, that they love that because they imagine, like, if they come where he lives, like in, in New York, where... Uh, you know, they imagine that FDR plugged his electric wheelchair to that. It's his joke, not mine. But, uh, you know, it's like this idea that living miserably has charm, has romance to it, um, is going to be a path to being frustrated rather quickly. You know, I stay in these hotels occasionally where I'm like, oh, let's stay in the classic hotel and it has the old school charm and it's, you know, it's just like it was in the 30s. 
And yeah, they got one bloody plug. And you're like, you, know, you don't have any light while you're charging your phone and then you're fighting. And stuff. In the same way that that hotel doesn't serve you potentially, the same way you'd rather stay in the modern hotel where there's plenty of plugs, everyone's happy charging their phone, you got plenty of light. I think that moving to a place where you've romanticized it in your head, but you don't really know how things work on a day-to-day -day basis is a recipe for disaster. How many people have moved to Bali, for example, because they go on Instagram and they see people on their zip lines and someone with like a perfect butt is like getting out of bed with their, their 27,000 strawberries on the table. It's like, yeah, that's great. You're not gonna have the 27,000 strawberries you're not going to probably hire anyone to do it for you because, I mean, beautiful people in Indonesia, some of the nicest people, but are they accustomed to, you know, setting up that stuff? Most places you're going to go, probably not. I know people who live in Bali, they're like, you know, it's just, it's hard to get kind of the same level of service. And their romance is going to fade away. If you are coming from a country, and especially the United States, where you are used to a very high level of service, everything works properly, everything works efficiently, you should probably look at a place like a Singapore, uh, like a Dubai. Perhaps the language barrier that seems romantic, by the way, um, oh, everyone speaks Spanish, oh, it's such a beautiful language. If you already speak it, fine. But if you're going to go and learn it, you may be frustrated for a while. And so in Europe, a place like Dublin, Ireland, for example, talk to a lot of folks, ah, it rains. Yeah, you know what? Everyone speaks English. They not only understand your language, but they understand what you mean. And so if you're a foreigner, there are incentives financial incentives for you to move to Ireland. Not available to Irish people, but available to people uh, who move there and who bring businesses from somewhere else. And so perhaps, even though it may not be quite as romantic, I think actually Ireland's very romantic, but uh, you know, much, maybe kind of the good long-term play. This is kind of the difference of, do you get into the, you know, the, the perfect love story, or do you find the relationship, the marriage that's based on kind of um, you know, shared values. And it's not always over the top romantic, but it stands the test of time. And so chasing romance is one thing that I would avoid because uh, whether it's plug, you know, having one plug in a hotel, whether it's going to restaurants that don't have wine and whether it's tripping down the street, uh, I understand culture. I like to go to the opera. I went to a number of operas just in the last couple months. Uh, you know, I like to go to certain markets and galleries and museums, but I would, you know, I would posit, for example, that if you were to, if you wanted to go to live in Spain, why not look at a place where maybe things are a bit more organized, uh, where they speak your language, where you're going to have what you want, let's say in a Dublin, you're going to have some level of culture, and then you take a trip because you're a nomad capitalist and you're not tied to living in one place for the rest of your life. Uh, you can even do that in Dubai. I mean, lots of flights into Dubai to places with culture, uh, and yet you're probably going to have more of the things that you want and expect on a day-to-day -day basis. The other thing is chasing sex appeal. And I was talking to a couple of uh, single friends of mine recently, and they were talking about, I did a, I did a, a couple months of traveling through the, the upper class cities in Europe. And if you wanna hear more about my experiences uh, on that, leave a comment below. And one of them was saying, oh, like all these like, you know, beautiful uh, women that I you know, follow on Instagram, they're in Milan, they're in Paris, like they moved there from somewhere else because they wanna be in the modeling scene, they wanna be in the fashion scene. And so, wow, what a great place to go. And, you know, I realized, first of all, uh, most people who go to certain cities, uh, the, many fashionable cities with sex appeal, have a certain clickiness to them. So whether it's Vienna, whether it's Zurich, those are some of the more, um, you know, respectable kind of business centers in Europe. Whether it's Milan, whether it's Paris, people make their way into clicks. If you go to be a model, if you go to be in fashion, you're going to be in that click. You're probably not going to be seen just walking around the street. So these guys who come to us who are like, Hey, you know, can I move to Milan for the, you know, Italy has a, has a tax incentive. They have a lump sum tax incentive. It's not a terrible deal. But I wouldn't encourage someone to move somewhere because, oh, I'm sure there'll be beautiful people there. Or it just seems so, so sexy. I've been uh, criticized by some folks for many years. Oh, if you're so wealthy, why are you in Montenegro? Why aren't you on the French Riviera? Why aren't you on, you know, here or there? Why, you know? And because living overseas, living the nomad capitalist lifestyle, I get to live where I want. Again, just did a tour of through Europe, I said, all right, maybe I'm missing something. I can promise you, I'm missing nothing. The places where I live, the Montenegros, for example, uh, you know, Lake Como, beautiful. Met some very nice people. Went to the, one of the best restaurants of my life the other day, uh, just near my hotel. 
do I think that if you're just going to basically stay in your villa and enjoy the view, that Italy, with its much more complicated tax system, more easily being dragged into their tax system, more paperwork, more bureaucracy, higher housing costs, uh, I think definitely higher property taxes, is like, is all that worth it? So I can say I live in the same place as George Clooney, because does anybody really care? It almost seems to me like people choose where they want to live for their second home or their vacation home, or if they're going to be nomadic capitalists, their new home, because they want people to be impressed by it in some cases. If you don't like Montenegro, that's okay. Uh, I'm not saying it's for everybody. I'm not saying it's not a place where I live full time. I like, to, I like to pop in occasionally during the summer. But I don't want to go and live in a place that has more sex appeal just because it has more sex appeal. And again, just traveled through Europe. I said, all right, let, let me see if there's really something better. Now, it's my opinion. You might think differently. You might think Lake Como, there's something magical about it. But again, I go back to the romance, you know, is on a day-to-day -day basis, it going to be more functional? And I'm not sure the answer is yes. And by the way, if I need to have a household staff and I want them to come from different parts around the world, probably easier to get them into Montenegro than to Italy. And so chasing sex appeal um, because you want to be with beautiful women or beautiful men uh, or because you want to be where George Clooney is or because that's where you should be because you have a certain level of wealth, that to me is the whole basis of Nomad Capitalist. If you want to live in those places, by all means do. But you know what some of our wealthiest clients want? They want to be off the grid. They want to be in the forest somewhere. Uh, they want to be, they want to have a property that is on the water, which in many of these uh, countries, uh, you can't do. I guess in Lake Como you can, but in some places, you go to Switzerland, for example, you can't necessarily buy on the water. Uh, and so, you know, I was in Monaco recently. I said, oh, you know, it's, it's great. I had a nice time, stayed at one of the best hotels, went to the casino, uh, looked at property for sale. You know what? It's a lot more hassle to move to Monaco. Uh, they're a lot more strict. And not even like, hey, we just don't want bad people, but they're a lot more strict in all the requirements. Do you want to go through that so that you can pay a lot more for a property um, and then you're still in a very small area? Maybe the answer is yes, but if the idea is I want to be in, and by the way, we have a guy who's become a friend of mine, known him for seven or eight years, he thinks it's the best country in the world. If that's the case, that's not sex appeal. That's, I, he gen, genuinely thinks Monaco is the best place in the world to live. So do it. But if you're only moving there so you can be, oh, he went to Monaco, okay, he's a serious guy. Why are you doing that? All right, so forget chasing romance, forget chasing sex appeal, go to places that you want to go and make it work. Um, you know, you can, hire staff, you can bring people in. There's lots of different ways you can do that. But I think that the whole, for me, purpose of this lifestyle is getting out of this keeping up with the Joneses that you do at home and finding the places that you really like. And for me, there's a practicality uh, that comes with this that would add to the equation, finding places where the roads are perfectly paved. Uh, I was talking about this in Malaysia. I was in uh, Malaysia doing a four hour drive a couple months ago and people were saying, oh, you know, the roads in these countries. Well, my roads are better than the roads uh, in Malaysia from where I, was, where I grew up in Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, and if you take that practicality into account and get rid of the romance and the sex appeal, you will have a better life. You will have a more efficient life. You'll have a happier life, in my opinion. And I say that as someone who has lived this for a number of years. And whenever I chase the romance, whenever I want to have the sex appeal, and speaking for many other folks that I've seen do it, it never works out as well as simply going where you're treated best and coming from a point of practicality.